Welcome to the January webcast featuring Forward in Christ Magazine's monthly parenting column, Heart to Heart Parent Conversations. I'm Nicole Balza, staff editor of Heart to Heart and Mama of Three. Okay, let's be honest. Most of us with small children enter the sanctuary with a certain sense of dread each Sunday. How much of the service will our little ones make it through before we need to make the dreaded walk of shame? Well, today my guest and I are going to talk about how we can engage children of all ages in our worship services so that we can lose that sense of dread and gain a sense of peace and joy as we worship. Joining me is Lisa Utek, a mom of four and the director of parish music at Christ the Lord in Brookfield, Wisconsin. Welcome, Lisa. Hi, thanks for having me. Sure. Well, thanks so much for joining us. Before we get started, can you just give us a little bit of an idea on some of your background? Tell us about your family and what you do. Sure. I am married to my husband, Josh. We live not too far from here in Waukesha, and we have four children, two boys and two girls right now, age four, six, eight, and ten. And as you mentioned, I'm the music coordinator at Christ the Lord Lutheran Church in Brookfield, so I teach the music classes there and um, work with the instrumentalists and the singers and the choirs and the handbells for worship. Okay. Well, during your years of service as a teacher and a musician and a director, as a mom, um, what are some of the things that you found to be the most effective ways of engaging young children in worship? Well, I think the first thing to remember as parents, there's a couple things. Number one is that children will learn what they see modeled for them. So it's really important, especially when you have babies and toddler ages, to ourselves, although they're very distracting from worship, to be engaged as much as we can. You know, dads, how important it is to sing and follow along and model that for the kids. Um, and showing them that you're following along in your worship folder or in mm -hmm. your hymnal, um, following and listening to the sermon in between every time you have to give them your attention because they do need you. And just to remember that, um, you know, as babies and toddlers, they're not designed by God to sit still and to take the pressure off of ourselves. I think as a mom, I always felt this sense of um, guilt that I was always disrupting others' worship or, or that I was, right. you know, everyone is watching me. And I don't think they really are. Right. <laughs> I think it's just great that we are there with mm -hmm. our kids to worship. So some of the things that, you know, as a mom, I would do when my kids were babies, when I was singing the hymns, I made an effort to, you know, when they were still being held in my arms, I would pat the rhythm mm -hmm. to some of the hymns and things like that with them. When I would sing to the hymns, I would look at them so that they could see my mouth moving and that my face was joyful and that um, you know I would try to, as they were learning language, if there was a repeated refrain or an alleluia, I would give them that little verbal cue whispered in their ear so that they could join with me whenever it was you know, developmentally appropriate you know, for them to do that. Um, I think it's also you know, when they're learning to read helping them either to hold your finger or you hold theirs and they track along with the, the hymn, even if it's just to the rhythmic pattern and they're not even able to read much of the words yet. That okay. just engages them. It's a way to keep them zoned in on to what's going on. Okay. Um, the standing up, the sitting down. You know, our synod is a very active worship. You know, our members are part of what's going on. Mm -hmm. We're not just the silent ob observers, so we can actively engage and model that for the kids. Okay, what about older kids? Do you have suggestions for how to engage older children in the worship service? Yeah, well, one thing that I think we do an excellent job at Christ the Lord is um, getting the kids involved with the music program. Okay. So they're playing maybe percussion or you know tambourine, shakers, things like that with their anthems. They um, participate in the handbell choir and I've got seventh and eighth grade boys who just cannot wait Mrs. Utag do we have handbells today <laughs> you know they are helping to lead worship and I think that's a neat responsibility for them to have um, the students play piano for their worship services on Friday at chapel and so that's a way if they have musical gifts to just really let them be a part of things as far as like in the pew with your you know everyday right. Sundays um, one thing I've found online, um, like for your tween ages, mm -hmm. would be those sermon note sheets. Oftentimes we do sermon notes mm -hmm. with catechism classes, right. but they make ones that are for, you know, your late elementary, I, my daughter's 10, okay. um, that are laid out in a way that gets them engaged to see what's going on in worship. So okay. I heard this word in the sermon and I didn't understand it. 
this was my favorite hymn. Um, I heard this in the sermon, and it makes me realize this about my life with God. You know, just deeper questions or ways for them to observe different parts of the service, not just the sermon. Sure. So that they can, you know, like I say, be more engaged rather than just sitting back in the pew and letting it all happen around them. Okay. So what are some of the things that you've seen, some of the good things that come from having children who are engaged in the worship service? I think, (laughs) this is a parenting. (laughs) I think the number one thing is for me and my husband, we now actually are worshiping better. Right. Because we're more present in what's taking place. So that I think is is like a goal that, that's that's an awesome place to be at. Um, So that season of when your kids are, distracting, let's Mm -hmm. say, it passes fast. So you just plow through and, you know, make do for the time being. But um, I've noticed that my kids, um, you know, I look down and I see them just singing. I didn't have to tell them to find the hymn. They would find it and follow along. They'll ask me questions at home uh, about something that they might have heard, or they'll say, hey, that was our hymnology hymn for this week. You know, so that I think is a big blessing just to see that they they feel a part of something right. that worship is for them. It's not just something that we get brought to and that this is for the grown-ups only. Mm-hmm. It's really for them too. Right, definitely, and that they can be a part of worshiping God right. and receive those blessings too. Right. Fantastic. Well, thanks so much. I really appreciate some yeah. of your suggestions. I can't wait to try them out with some of my kids. Well, great. <laughs> thanks for having me again. If, um, if you'd like to read more articles on this topic or other Christian parenting topics, visit Heart to Heart's website at forwardinchrist.net. While there, you can chime in with your thoughts or questions, learn more about Heart to Heart's authors, you can view other webcasts or podcasts on parenting topics, or subscribe to Forward in Christ magazine. Thank you for joining us, and may God bless your parenting journey.